Hey everybody, Nick here, and this morning I got a little disassembly video for you. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, Cold Steel Lucky One. This is a weird knife uh, overall, and especially coming out of Cold Steel. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it down, because it's not that usual that a uh, slip joint is straightforwardly disassemblable. So, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Looks like generic Torx bits here. Let's see what size we're looking at. I am placing a bet right now that we're looking at some T4s. Nope, swing and a miss. Uh, T5 might be the correct answer. T5. Just make sure T6 isn't going to do the trick. Just, you know... Generally with Torx, if you can use a slightly bigger size, you're safe for doing so. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, T6 or T5 would work here. But let's go ahead and use T6. This is a knife that I almost don't believe is coming out of cold steel. Ah. Oh. Each one of these looks to be independently threaded on both sides. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's free spinning, so you gotta be using both sides of the knife in order to uh, remove it. Which is okay, I've got a second Torx tool, but that's just a little bit of a foul there. Go ahead and secure on one side. Oh, come on, you little bugger. This right here is the part of the disassembly where I really wish I had a couple of more hands. It would be handy. <laughs> okay, great. That's popped out. Some minor form of thread locker going on there. Looks like Loctite Blue. Make sure and use some when I put the thing back together. But anyways, as I was saying, I don't really believe that this is a cold steel knife. Um, just because it is very different than what they're normally doing. They're using a very pretty carbon fiber here. They're, they're, they're. It's a traditional sort of slip joint knife. Aside from all the crappy writing on the blade, I, I hardly believe that this is coming out of cold steel at all. But uh, nonetheless, it's an interesting entry. No doubt. There we go. Pop free. And we'll take it down. And actually, this guy, just, you know, for, for reference, is pretty much new from the factory. Um... My buddy Pete had it sent straight to me, and then I will send it along to him. So thank you very much, Pete, and for being very explicit uh, that I can go ahead and do the disassembly. Because it's great. It's a good way to get to know the knife. And I get to do something for the viewers out there who might not be as well, well versed, experienced, whatever, in taking knives apart. Okay, there we go. So... We are disassembled. There's actually a washer there of sorts. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. What position has the least tension? So, I mean, obviously right here we see we've got a scale, and we see that the scale is actually a continuous chunk of carbon fiber, which is impressive. Another thing that we see here is that the pocket clip uh, sits inside this groove. That's how the pocket clip doesn't rotate, despite being secured with only one spring. But what that also means is that this is not going to be a knife where you can straightforwardly take out the pocket clip. Um, it's going to want to keep rotating. Now, uh, what we can see here is that, uh, sorry, I got some sunlight coming in here. We can see that there is a backspacer, which also acts as the spring for the slip joint. Uh, and that there is a uh, blade in here, and it is being held in by a pivot. And there are little tiny washers going on in there, which are already kind of dirty, which is interesting. Let's see if I can't convince this blade out of here. There we go. That's popped out. Washer, washer. Here is your slip joint sort of spring. And that's how the slip joint works, is that the geometry of the uh, the spring here is just pressing against various faces of the blade. Yeah, let me drop these shades. There we go. Come on, you little bugger. Not quite. There we go. But either way, that's how your slip joint knives sort of work, just universally. So I'm going to go ahead and get in here, do a little bit of cleaning up. 
Already there's gunk and there's wear, but that's not so shocking. Whenever you use a knife, you're breaking it in, slowly but surely, and in this case, and in most cases, in fact, the break-in involves a little bit of wearing, deburring, that kind of thing, off the factory, and so it's not surprising to me when a brand new knife has got some gunk in it, especially if it's been carried or handled since. So these washers are... <laughs> I, I would call this paper thin, but it's legitimately, paper is not a good comparison here. This is just like, it's ridiculously thin is what it is. Go ahead and grab the one off the back side here, wash that off. Nice. Let's degunk the blade itself. Paying some special attention to the contact faces for the slip joint. It is nice, I, I, I will say. I appreciate very much the fact that this is a disassemblable slip joint knife. That is not a usual thing. That is not a regular occurrence. And so when they somebody does it, I'm a big fan. All right. And because, hashtag, I am not a brilliant man, I have managed to just misplace my washer. There it is. Somehow managed to get under the table, which is thrilling, needless to say. Okay. This looks good. The blade looks fine as it is. I'm going to go ahead and wipe off a little bit more here. Everything else looks pretty good in here. So I think it's time just to do a little bit of relubrication and send this little guy on its way. So uh, here I'm going to actually use the heavier weight of the nano oil because this lubrication will need to last for a little while and because this is never going to be a you know smooth dropping sort of knife to start with. It is a slip joint. That means, well... Smooth dropping ain't on the table. I'm not sure how the back spring's gonna fight me here putting this back in, but it is what it is. Put a little bit on the tang of the blade here. And we're gonna see. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to have to take off this backspace. Uh, so what I've just done is popped loose the um, this back pin here. So that way the, uh, the, the, the uh, slip joint action is allowed to kind of swing free, which is beautiful. And it gets out of the way of my blade, which is equivalently excellent. So there we go. Got that on there. Make sure everything's, yeah, that's nice and lubed. Drop that on there. Drop my other paper thin washer. A little bit more oil, why not? Okay, so now the play is gonna be, I slide this guy up here, applying pressure basically to the slip joint mechanism and attempt to push the backspacer back in as I am applying that pressure. This is not super graceful. There may be a better way here, but at the moment I'm not aware of it. So, I'm pretty much hosed. I'm gonna actually see if I can get a little bit better chance by putting the knife in that configuration. Maybe. It's the problem. Anytime you're dealing with a knife that stays shut under spring tension, Reassembling it sometimes can be tricky because you're fighting that very same spring tension. Mm, man, this ain't pretty. What's the better approach here? Hmm. That 
one's for you, Luke Albert. Um, I'm kind of wondering whether I can get a better approach. Yeah, let's try this approach here. Now I just bend up in this direction and hopefully Oh, come on now. Hopefully you can see what I'm after here. I've got these the backspacer is secured on the back and on the front here, and I'm just trying to pop it down the rest of the way, figuring that that might be a little bit easier, but holy crap, is this not working for me. One of my viewers, John Tetichwan, recently referred to my Delica disassembly as, quote, cringy. And, uh, you know, this is running the risk of being another one of those cringy disassembly videos. Because I'll be honest here, I am making this up as I go. Oh, yeah, got it. Freaking finally. Alrighty, that was just a question of putting in the effort and bending the thumbnail a little bit there. Now, we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and put the scale back on before this pops loose and I'm back in hurt town. And I know that as I put my screws in here, I'm going to increase the tension pretty organically, and uh, that'll pop everything back together, because you can see there's still a little bit of gap here. That's okay. See, that wasn't that cringy. Just admitting the fact that it was heading that direction seemed to be enough to pop it along. Taking some blue locked idea, and just dipping the thread of the screw in there. I'm going to go ahead and... Slide this into the pivot region. And again, remembering that the screws are free spinning here. Which means that in order to really crank this guy down effectively, I am going to need to... Can I actually get any Loctite on there that time? Yeah, there we go. I'm going to actually need to secure it from the other side. But my goal right now is not so much to get it secure as just to get everything pinched back down together. There we go. Sometimes, especially with these Chicago screws, you uh, one of them will be sticking a little far out. You can kind of use the other one to lever the first one in back into place. Be careful if you've got like fragile scale material or something like that, but because you are applying a fair amount of compressive force. I think for the most part, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna go ahead and pop this in there. Oh, you little bugger. Oh yeah. That was almost like I know what I'm doing. Almost. Now, crank this down a little bit more here. Beautiful. Okay. And on this guy, I just want to kind of make sure that the pocket clip, and I'm using a piece of leather here just so... I'm not scratching up the nice carbon fiber. I'm going to back this off just slightly, kind of wiggle it around a bit, making sure that we're at the right angle here, because it's not sitting flushly, and I'm not recalling whether it did sit flushly at any point. Being a cold steel, it may never have, but I want to make sure that, you know, I'm not leaving it in a position, oh there, 
where it is precarious, and apparently it was precarious there. So let's just tighten down further. Oh, there. This is impressive. Come on, you little bugger. There we go. I think I got the clip popped in now. I need to hold it on this side. There we go. That's better. And on this guy, I'm only really going to turn these screws until they start rotating on the other side. I got Loctite in there. I don't want to do it too too much. There's no sense in over-talking anything here. Grab, go a little bit further here. Okay, now the other side is turning. Okay, this does need a little bit more torque because I'm noticing massive side-to-side -side blade play. So, in that case... In a perfect world, I wouldn't need to do this, but this is a cold steel. Got a little bit more love there. Pull is still good. Blade play is pretty much gone. Yeah, it's gone. There we go. And uh, the lucky one has now been disassembled and reassembled even. Everything looks good on the clip. Everything else looks fine. No major wear and tear. Can't argue with that, right? Alrighty. Um, I hope this has been interesting. Keep an eye out for the review coming up here shortly. Interesting knife. I can't believe Cold Steel made it. But then I open the blade and realize, oh yeah, 15 fonts. That's a Cold Steel. Oh, Cold Steel. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day, and I hope it's a lucky one. Uh, all right. Bye now.